My younger sister um, hated this clown. Wait, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, what? You, you gave that like it was the setup oh, like to a like, a, like a joke. Like, no, it's a real clown. One of the first like, proper conversations yeah. Pierre, had and I, uh, Pierre and I had it was in 2016. Yeah. And Pierre was telling me about the one clown on the Isle of Man. And I couldn't breathe because for some reason the name just really hit me. <laughs> Champagne the clown. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> but you're a master in. I think this is interesting. You're a master in reply, guys. I am a master in reply, guys. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Yeah. How would you? How, how would you summarize like? If you had to do like a David Attenborough style, you know, where he briefly introduces you to the Arctic fox or whatever. <laughs> it's not all the information, but it's a crucial. It's a mammal. It lives in the Arctic. You know. Is that, can you do that for Reply Guys? So Reply Guys are men on the internet who develop parasocial relationships with the ones that I studied were female public figures. So they have like a one-sided personal relationship to female celebrities on the internet. And I've spoke to so many of them and I've spent hours speaking to them and oh. they're delightful little gentlemen. <laughs> you reply to the Reply Guys. <laughs> Guys, guys. <laughs> is it tempting to tell them to stop when they're sort of like, uh, Milady, I found myself in the old bumble, but you're like, we don't interfere with nature. <laughs> we have I to got, take it, so we have to let it happen. Um, Glenn, if I'm being completely honest, I did get a uh, quite a poor grade because I interviewed my own reply guys. Oh. <laughs> my supervisor was like, that's not impartial. And I'm like, I don't think I should be penalized for having a perfect ass. So you're supposed um, to have like Star Trek rules. Like <laughs> we don't interfere with their culture. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We you, try you, not to teach them anything. But you keep, you could really like set them set them a buzz by like posting a picture with like a little bit of mess on your counter and then like thousands will be like hey nice counter be yeah, great. yeah yeah cleaning the fuck up and you'll yeah. see here that the female comedian has snitch tagged the reply guy's wife <laughs> sadly this this group of reply guys will now starve <laughs> well some sometimes um i've seen you get that glenn with like stuff in the background in your house yeah, we call it, uh, my girlfriend and I call it rocks in the background, which was because we we were envisaging what people would have been like when the Mona Lisa came out. And so we're going, oh, so, why are your hands crossed, yeah, young yeah. lady? <laughs> and then someone just going, oh, rocks in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty and weird tea towel you've got there, yeah. Lisa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A sort of go, yeah. Noticing my plug sockets doesn't make you interesting. Yeah. It, does, it, does, it fundamentally doesn't. There's a photo I posted well, I about five years ago. And Milo's a huge fan of it. I think Riley knows us about this as well. And there's tea towels in in view, and the man's like, "How many tea towels is too many tea towels? Three. And I just, I will never forget yeah, him. And then you were like, "I'm going to go to school about it." <laughs> yeah, 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 I must study this. You were so mind. weird. I got a degree. Yeah. How did I learn from that? Yeah. I'm, I'm so petty. I'm a doctor in you. That's how strange you are. I'm, I'm a doctor in what a fuck up you Do are. Doctor, you a new TV series? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's just and then you were just like you know what? yeah nine months of my life is going to be dedicated to how to this and this strange interaction also the mona lisa would you say it came out <laughs> like it was like a movie yeah, i reckon Noah's like uh, Noah <laughs> like oh shit new lisa just dropped uh, what was it this is before you know movies so people used to go to the cinema to just look at a big painting yeah. <laughs> and, and before <laughs> they'd show you um Little bits of pictures that were relevant to the painting, yeah. and like new ones that might be on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Show you woodcuts of stuff that was happening in Savoy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you have this really patronising. He goes, right, so it's going to get dark. Turn off your phones. We don't know what that is. Turn off your phones. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> silence your phones. Michelangelo is just launching yeah, a huge right. block of marble. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I just get, I get so annoyed where people think that oh, like liking the Sistine Chapel ceiling is a personality. Like it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got you go back to a guy guy's house and he has a Sistine Chapel on his wall. Yeah, you're just yeah. like, oh god. I can't believe you've got a Cesare Borgia bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you paint a ceiling? You got a neck problem? <laughs> what is this? And it's like, oh god. And it's all the same characters from the Bible Extended Universe. It's like, <laughs> new IP, please. Do you know that uh, God was actually super into feet? <laughs> I mean, he was a Tarantino reference. Yeah. If yeah. Yeah. There we of go. Course. <laughs> uh -huh, of course. Of course. It took me a second because I was still thinking about the Sistine Chapel. And I was like, "Damn, this is a there lot." Feet? Mm. All there, the cherubs' feet are out. Feet. All the all the cherubs' feet are out. I'm doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, in sync muscle memory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You still need to suck the toes of the mic, as it were. Uh, Mm, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. going to be a PhD for you, Al. <laughs> mm. 
Like the you, the comments of this alone are going to be a PhD. Uh, any point you ask, is anyone explaining a doctor? You're like, yeah, but for one guy, it's like it was one. Yeah. Guy. This guy's bothering the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> he keeps commenting on the number of hats he's got hung up in the cockpit. <laughs> oh, uh, I I looked up I looked up Isle of Man local news. Okay. Recently. Oh, yeah? mm. uh, I found a, a letter to, not a letter to the editor, I found a couple letters to the editor. I found an article that I enjoy. And this is actually from like the 19th of July. This is, this Which is recent. It's hot. It's hot off the press. It's from today. Yeah. Recent from, at the time this. of recording. Recent yeah. at the time mm. of recording. There's not that much news on the island. I think it's an interesting island. Oh, it's interesting. But you it's, know, yeah. the island of, Ma- island of Man, that's a flag for a foot guy. Yeah. Ah, yeah, three yeah, yeah, feet spinning around. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What Just... sort of other man headlines are there? Like, mainland policeman goes missing. No, man, no. <laughs> 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 Foolhardy investigation into island goings on comes to abrupt end. Uh, bumper, bumper, honey harvest expected. Yeah. Yeah. No mainland. If you say mainland, they'll, they'll, you'll be in shit. They're like, no. this is the mainland because it's not part of the UK. Oh right, of course. Yeah. yeah. So they say we well, are on the mainland, and then they throw a tankard at your head. Yeah. Mainland. Do you yeah. guys know what's the clown called? What did the clown for one clown on the Isle of Man? <laughs> the used to be clown. Clown. My youngest, my younger sister, um, hated this clown. <laughs> Wait, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, what? That you you gave that like it was the setup oh, like to a like thing. a like a joke. Like, no, it's a real clown. One of the first like proper conversations yeah. Pierre had and I, uh, Pierre and I had, it was in 2016. Yeah. And Pierre was telling me about the one clown on the Isle of Man, and I couldn't breathe because for some reason <laughs> the name just really hit me. It's champagne the clown. <laughs> Isn't that really adult? <laughs> yeah, it's quite sexy. It so- I mean, I, I, it does sound a bit like a stripper, right? Yeah, like champagne like, the clown. Yeah, He's also like a stripper. A, it sounds like a clown stripper. It's like, like an 18th Academy century Philippe Gaulier. It's, it's something about it. It's like an 18th century French clown with no limbs or something like that, and yeah. then he gets like sort of brought in on a stretcher and this well, is so champagne. classy. Oh, I just think it's yeah. really creepy. I don't know why. I, I'm obsessed with the idea of, you know, like like the one teacher at the inner city comp who went to Oxford or whatever and so everyone's like, what's it like? Like the one guy on the Isle of Man who went to Golier. Yeah. <laughs> and he's come yeah. back and he's like, it's very conceptual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Champagne the Clown. <laughs> Only on the Isle of Man could you be looking for your clown and find it in Champagne. <laughs> so, oh. Here's one for you. Why does your little sister think that the clown is despicable? She, she thought it was despicable because it. It it's like a small... T- anyone who grew up in a small town where there's like one magician who you hire for kids' parties and so just every birthday party you go to, it's you'll ne- well, you'll never guess who's... It's Magic Rick, you know, yeah, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Obviously, because it's the only thing you can do to just not have a generic party with nothing happening. Champagne yeah. the Clown was that. <laughs> Headline, um, Magic Rick implicated in child <laughs> exploitation <laughs> ring. Uh, <laughs> my sister had seen Champagne the Clown at like four of her friend's birthdays mm-hmm. and hated him and, re- and was afraid of him. Come oh, on, man, get a bigger bike. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get new trousers. Yeah. Congrats on losing all that weight. Yeah. He, <laughs> but it's time to just. Uh, he lost a lot of weight off his feet as well. It was quite impressive. If you're, sho- yeah. if you're, if you're going to be wearing shoes that are that big, you're asking for fallen arches. Yeah, come yeah. on. You've clearly got anemia. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So she <laughs> thought, I hate this clown. And then, unbeknownst to her, my mum, as a marvelous surprise, had secretly booked Champagne the Clown for her birthday. Champagne. And so Champagne the Clown was just sort of. Revealed to my sister as being in the house now <laughs> at the start of her party. Uh-huh. She was so horrified and, 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 and rightly so angry yeah. that she couldn't escape Champagne the Clown even on her own special day. You, you can't yeah. even, as Champagne the Clown, do the many clowns getting out of a small car bit because you're the only clown. Yeah, you just don't. <laughs> You'd have to drag lay people into your car. The most you can do is, is you. you Pop your nose off and foam shoots out of your mouth and nose yeah. like Jesus. a horrible clown. <laughs> like champagne. Uh, but oh. only if you shake me up. <laughs> shake me, kids. Shake champagne the clown. <laughs> he was, he was that only, the the only strippergram. <laughs> you have to double up to really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a small market. Yeah. It's so well, horrible. The key champagne. is you'd never want to fuck those two assignments up. You want to know mm. where you're going. Yeah. Unless it's a clown stripper, in which case you can be like, okay, I was here, I had the boombox. However, I can switch the tape for like circus music and take out 
Genuine's pony. Like a like a fr- like a Frenchman on, on a stag do. Like, and of course, we've got you the strip clown, <laughs> as is tradition. But you know, I guess it. But you know, presumably, champagne wouldn't have stripped at a kid's party. It's an adult thing because otherwise, he wouldn't have shown his clussy. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> horrible. The clown. His big red clussy. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. oh. I, I think I'm starting to hate champagne the clown. Yeah. <laughs> Is champagne the clown still working? Let's find out. Google him. Let's inquire. It yeah, could have literally says... just been someone's like weird. Yeah. Is there more than one champagne the clown globally? I wonder. So, okay, okay, there's no record the gun of gun on champagne the clown existing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no, there's Mandela no... effect. Mandela <laughs> effect. <laughs> yeah. Just on, he died 20 years ago on this very day and is buried beneath his very yeah. <laughs> Native American burial ground. But, but, <laughs> yeah, he was just, actually Native American. But posting on, um, posting on like Facebook local on Isle of Man, it's like, anyone else remember Champagne the Clown? <laughs> <laughs> on one of those, do you remember sums? Do you remember sums? <laughs> do you remember going to school? Just immediately a comment like, don't speak of Champagne the Clown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a sad chapter in this island's history. He maybe spelled differently. That's, a, it- weird, that's a weird sponsor thing. So for some reason, you know how like um, adverts can just like read your IP address and they're like, mm. you know, mm. used cars in London or whatever, yeah. or wherever yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. For some reason, Andreas is, is the place that, that does that for the Isle of Man. And Andreas has a population of maybe 40. It's like not the main place on the Isle of Man. Mm. And I don't know why robots have decided like, mm-hmm. this will be good. I find I find those targeted ads very funny, particularly when you go somewhere rural. Yeah, because it makes ads so much funny when it's sort of like yeah. there's so many hot sluts for you in Cricklewood. You're like, <laughs> yeah. No, there's not. I don't think so. No, there's I've not. But, also, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Andreas, where it's like you know, ten houses and a farm. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And it's like a new like Mercedes dealership in Andreas, and you're like, well, there's not, is there? <laughs> I'd have seen yeah. it being built. Dead should be policeman more in your yeah. area. There's <laughs> one 60 year old Mick, uh, and it's not really clear what he does for a living, but he's in your area. Champagne the Clown is in your area. <laughs> yeah. Champagne, a pop the, up. Champagne the Clown is closing on your location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the following pace. We won't tell you from what direction. <laughs> it's like it follows, but it could c- be confined to the Isle of Man. Uh, Through the soil. I'm giving yeah. so much personal information. Gave, he just gave what his are you actual doing? phone number to an ing, to a fucking. Oh man, Champagne the Clown is gonna get you, bro. Champagne, you're you're giving him all the tools. Champagne the Clown, the only clown to be killed by a TT bike. I oh, need just bursting into confetti. If I'm gonna, if yeah. I'm gonna browse, <laughs> also, also Ryan's a, entertainment. As a Chinese oh, made superbike look- slams into him. I'm trying to find an Isle of Man. And- okay, well. Yo! Okay. I don't like him. I found Bim- another clown. I don't like him one Bimbo. Bit. Bimbo the clown. Bimbo. Stop it. The yeah. huge jitted clown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, he's in, he's in London Sorry. too. Yeah? It's see? Bimbo. Where is the Isle of Man clown? No, see, it's all about Come who you know. To Bimbo. It's all about who you know in the Isle of Man. <laughs> Excuse me, can you, can you bring up Bimbo? <laughs> yeah. Go back to Bimbo. Uh, He's Jamie, can you pull it up for us? Maybe he's had a different past and you actually look him up and it's like Champagne the Clown, also known as Timothy McVeigh. <laughs> was <a> very, <laughs> <laughs> he was all about returning to nature and lots of handkerchiefs all tied together. As an example of the sort of thing technology Wait, would you steal get, from us. Are you confusing two different kinds of bomber here? Yeah. I mean, Timothy McVeigh, Oklahoma City bomber. Whereas I oh, sorry, like you, were, the, you were Ted Kaczynski. I'm going Ted Kaczynski. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. I'm the That's resident that. American mainland bombing expert. I always get my um, American domestic terrorists mixed up. And it's very embarrassing. It's a type of dyslexia, I think. Ted Kaczynski was really funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> surprisingly <laughs> down to earth also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Met him at a charity uh, do. Okay, really so funny freaking looking, in my opinion. I just did a road trip of America, and oh, one of my favorite things is, is to force your clown. friends to do a podcast for you, which is when you force someone who's sitting next to you in the car to read a Wikipedia page in full. Yeah. Do you guys know that? That's right, fun. Okay. That's a really fun thing to do. I like that. So what we you did were telling the viewers how to do a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Talk about putting ourselves out of business. <laughs> you know, you teach a man to fish. Yeah. <laughs> so did you have to do... <laughs> Did you have to do the Unabomber? Uh, no, I got my my friend Ewan to do it. Ah, okay. Um, and he did a great job, and just so many fun facts. Did it have a big controversy section? Wait, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get to that. Yeah, <laughs> he just was a guy who went to Harvard. Um, <laughs> wait, there was a. Oh, it's, fun when you, it's fun when you go on and, and something like the Unabomber, and there is the controversies bit. That there's always a bit that's like jazz album or something, and you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, people oh, right. hated it. cheated on his exams. Yeah, they were like, go back to the mailbox. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't for you. It's offensive. It's a type of percussion. I once really wound up some people I didn't really know very well at the pub because one of them described Hitler as a controversial figure. And I was like, no, Hitler's not controversial. There's a broad consensus about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually That's very uncontroversial. Yeah. They We're not hated still debating it. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they hated it so much. And I'm like, well, you just don't understand what controversial means. You meant mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Controversial means it's about 50 50 on Hitler, which is not the case. Yeah, Johnny Cash is controversial. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. As a person. Can I tell you a funny thing Ted Kaczynski did, please? please. Yeah. In 2012, Kaczynski responded to the Harvard Alumni Association's direct inquiry for the 50th reunion of the class of 1962. He listed his occupation as prisoner and his eight life sentences as awards. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably without That's an ICP. Gag. That's funny. They should tell a presence Kaczynski in. Well, I mean, they can't now. RIP. You know uh, what? I'm going to be upon the martyr. But, you know, like back in the day, that would have been funny. You're at the Harvard class of 52 reunion and Ted Kaczynski is being wheeled around on an iPad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Still in okay. uh, the also, Colorado how... maximum security prison. But hang on. How angry would he be to be on an iPad? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get me off this family! The ultimate humiliation. Uh, the idea of someone sweating on death row, not because they're dying, because they're like, it's my high school reunion. <laughs> oh, I hope, I hope I look good compared yeah, to the yeah. other people. I'm, just, I'm gonna fall into all my old habits. I got Setting all my hair. Going, look at these losers. I'm, I'm gonna turn that compliment around though, because I think if you've got nothing to do but respond to your post, you better be a, be pretty funny. Right. He's yeah, got a lot then, of yeah. time to come yeah. up with a gag, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want to give too much credit to the Unabomber. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, so for his human. You could have done punch up on the Unabomber. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to write for the Unabomber. Um, <laughs> and then I, I got a He's job got, on like, the Pete Davidson show. in there with him. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. just fucking. He's not writing it. John Mulaney on the phone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just enjoying the writer's strike. Sorry. Yeah. I don't think Champagne the Clown was real. We're still on Champagne. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing the whole time you were Googling Champagne. <laughs> yeah, okay. I've been trying to find this Riley, man. Riley's been doing that sort of end of the usual suspects thing where... Can I do controversial opinion? I think... Yeah, but I, I walk out of the studio and I put a nose <laughs> and get to a car. <laughs> Clinking some champagne yeah. glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's a clown, maybe it's a it's a misspelling of Champagne with an SH or something. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah the greatest yeah, yeah. trick Champagne the Clown ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. <laughs> um, Kevin Spacey's just out and about in London at the moment, and Is I he? find that really strange. Yeah, because he's ah. not um, he's not he's not like in custody post each court of course each yeah. day. So apparently, he's been in Groucho in Soho, just hanging what? out, just yeah. in the evenings. Yeah. yeah, him and Champagne the Clown telling <laughs> yeah. old stories, just fielding questions, and apparently, but people there are fine with that. I don't know. Is he all right, Kev? Yeah, let's just toast you with a pint of mild. <laughs> all right, is that, is that how they do it in the Groucho? Yeah. Is that the idea of a Groucho so. being a sort of authentic Yorkshire pub, like flagstone floor, yeah. roaring, <laughs> roaring fire? You know, there's like a dog asleep in the <laughs> corner. Time for the meat raffle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy going around yeah, selling lamb David Baddiel always Rapidly. wins meat raffle I'm convinced he's got it rigged <laughs> I like to go to the Groucho of a big sports bag just full of fidget spinners and DVDs <laughs> 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 Try and sell them to Tracy Emin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tra- tra- no, you can't get Tracy Emin away from the fruit machine <laughs> oh, no, She's on there so, She gets very annoyed if you interrupt her I have found one Entertainer based in and available in the Isle of Man. He's okay. appearing in the valley. It's Magic Matt, a magician and pickpocket. Oh, pickpocket! <laughs> you can have a nice two pickpocket. So, well, to be fair, a lot of games that you and I enjoy are based around pickpocket missions, and this guy's just <laughs> I'm saying, well, yeah, I can get the key. I'm just saying. Yeah. We, we, what we've done is we we've hired a man to hitman. Uh, yeah, yeah he's... but there's no satisfaction in him going, and here are your keys. He'd be like, well, can I, like, remember this TV show years ago? There's a guy, uh, there's a presenter, I can't remember his name, but he's like a reformed former burglar. And the show was, he would test your, you would volunteer your home for him to test your security. And the idea was, like, it, it, you know, if he couldn't break into your home, then he sort of won. But they would show you and, like, your spouse just sat there watching on a TV screen on CCTV as he tries to get into your house. And obviously he succeeds immediately, but he just spends an hour just taking your stuff and trashing your home. And the people just be sat there watching the CCTV going, oh God, yeah, we should have locked this, that. This seems off. like it's just a burglar. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it was just very yeah. Because at the end they were like, let me have our fucking stuff back. It was just like, and then, and then the idea was they then worked out how to secure the home. And then at the end he'd like try the front door on the window a few times and go, they did it. 
But like he still trashed their house. <laughs> this, <laughs> this really is, yeah, hang on, that's not fair as well because given the correct like if, if you have the right amount of time and you're allowed to just smash windows with rocks, then he of was course like, you can get in. He was like yeah. not obviously like taking shits on their duvet and stuff, yeah. but it was like he was really <laughs> throwing he stuff. He drew around. the line and piss. <laughs> in, in that's one of those shows, I cannot find anywhere online. Like I know Mandela I haven't effect? made it up. I think yeah, this, yeah. this is a possible Mandela effect. <laughs> where I don't think it is. I had this, I had this recently with another people. show. I'm, I'm certain John Coleshaw hosted a show years ago called Alter Ego. Where he interviewed someone, but while impersonating them, so he would interview Chris wow, Tarrant that's whilst a good idea. dressed and impersonating Chris Tarrant. No, because the joke has run out after ten seconds. Yeah, your Ben's sort of going. Yeah, your Ben's sort of going. Oh, so when your wife died, it, uh, it's just like <laughs> <laughs> you've just had to give an interview. Uh-huh. So you really like, love Extreme Railway. Uh-huh. You imagine that we're seeing the the fatigue start to settle into Chris Tarrant's eyes and the panic start to settle into John Cole's eyes. So just <laughs> there's another ten minutes. This, this is long. Oh. Yeah. I think it's like the really sad bit in the interview, but he's still doing the impression. Yeah, yeah. as they see the thickness of the cards in his hand, like <laughs> yeah. there's so many questions <laughs> left. Yeah. I'm so fascinated though by a guy who like burgles your house like as a test, but then actually does burgle you. It's yeah. like if you went to a self defense class and the guy just kicks the absolute <laughs> shit out of you and is like, "Yeah, toughen up and come back next week." You got to work on that. <laughs> yeah, you do this every week, sooner or later. Like like being in the Marines or something. Yeah, like, if I you... break your guard, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I break your guard, I can use your credit card for 10 minutes. No yeah. rules. Next week, you're going to come back and be less of a pussy if I beat you up hard enough. Because uh-huh. the, yeah. desi- the hunger will be there. There are thousands of men who would, who would take that up and believe it. Like, yeah. They all do CrossFit now, yeah. right? Yeah. Because they have this fundamental belief. That the more they get hurt, the better the outcome will be for them. Yeah. Mm. And you could do a PhD in That's my in attitude them. towards love. Pain is just money leaving the wallet, as yeah. they say, <laughs> in the CrossFit industry. But that's how I feel about, uh, we had a, a French teacher who wouldn't speak anything other than French to us. And that's, how, I was like, I don't, but I don't speak French. And then every week you'd you be like. You the music do the talking, famously. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, earlier on, this is a bit of a sidebar. Imagine if none of us had heard of Girls Aloud and we're like, what? <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? You can understand funky music. It is, uh, <laughs> it is b- baroque and uh, abstract. Earlier, I was looking at uh, new cars on Auto Trader. I mean, new to me, not actually. I'm not that rich. But um, and then one of them was being displayed at a dealership in Swindon, and on the in-car entertainment system in one of the pictures, what was playing was "I Can't Speak French" by <laughs> Girls Aloud. And I was like, "Was that a deliberate choice yeah, or an yeah. accident?" <laughs> I'm so intrigued. This car dealer being like, "This is a let the funky music do the talking kind of <laughs> demographic that we're going for." But wait, so it would like they would just this teacher would speak French to you, and you'd just be like, "Well, I don't know that yet." Mm. Yeah, I don't speak French. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here to like, Better luck next time, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> or so you assume yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, the body language that's did, what i assume did you basically. ever learn any french it was my or? best uh, subject in high school i mean i don't speak french to me but it, uh-huh. it did work okay well there you go but, it, but did you so have, maybe... guys have this where it's like the language teacher wouldn't speak english to you no yeah, well, we, no i had that no, i had that i had did a you very... learn the language that they were trying to teach you it was a french teacher as well it, it, did, it did broadly work I... and they also the guy he was he was a great teacher, but he was very strict and eccentric. He would make us do all the vowels, you know, A E I O U, but yeah, in the French, classic but the vowels, French yeah. version of the vowels. Come on. So you go uh, 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 oh, no, that's a, it. You're uh, out. E, o, U. and we'd have to like chant them because he says if you can do them, then you can pronounce French words properly. Oh, so you're sort of doing that witch doctor song from the nineties. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or ultimately, it sounds like you're just like. You're the last real Habsburg partisan. Ding <laughs> dang, wala wala ding dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. but it worked because he was sick of of English people learning good French, but because they're English, refusing to put any welly into the actual accent. Yeah. Right. So yeah, like yeah, yeah, grammatically yeah, yeah. perfect, but hideous sounding French. Yeah. I don't think it would have worked at my school because we there, you could as an option take ancient Greek, and it, this makes it sound like my school was a private school, and it was not. I had no idea why ancient Greek was an option. But the teacher would it obviously wouldn't have been an option at a the, private t- school. The teacher <laughs> would not have spoken fluently because the only way you can really speak ancient Greek fluently is if you sounded like a dying old man. And if you were going to hey, Laura, Laura, Baba. <laughs> 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 you, would, you would lie on a big chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it says, well, well, all right, class, and take up positions on your fainting couches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, with ancient Greek, there's quite a funny phenomenon, which is that 
the modern Greeks insist that it was pronounced like modern Greek, even though this is demonstrably linguistically not the case. So there's this like big so unlikely anyway. argument yeah, between like all scholars of ancient Greece who aren't Greek and scholars of ancient Greece who are Greek, who are all like, they're all broadly consensus ancient Greek was pronounced like this. And then the Greek ones are like, no, <laughs> it was pronounced like this. <laughs> hey, I tell you about ancient Greek, okay? <laughs> um, also, I, I do like the idea, though, that one of your, like, old Norse teachers would have insisted on speaking nothing but old Norse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Just only uh-huh. welcoming people in with passages of Orkney Inga saga and stuff. Just pieces <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of ancient saga like, text. A, a shirtless, and... wearing a loincloth, mm. yeah. armed. In our class, every lesson, we all go around the room and recite the names and deeds of our ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> we all know who we're dealing with. <laughs> well, actually, we're having class outside today because can you see that monastery in the distance over there? <laughs> <laughs> now I know the two of you have a disagreement and you know the rules here in uh, Norse class. <laughs> You're going to stand on a small island in a stream on two patches of leather and fight to the death or until three shields in a row have been shattered by the blows of your opponent. I don't make the rules. The Norse made the rules. That was a thing. I would let my shield be broken. Three times? Three times yeah. and go, go, you go, oh, you got me. <laughs> you got me. Did you yeah. try to like give, your sh- give it a little mustard on the blocks? Yeah, to be yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This guy's been weakening his shield specifically for this purpose. <laughs> the I mean, shield comes right off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I dropped it. That counts as a break. Yeah. It's like yeah. one of those like like bobsled cheating scandals where they've got like weights in the front of the sled. Like this guy's been taking struts out the back of his shield. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always amazed when someone goes through all the effort and controversy and life ruining risk of cheating at like bobsled. Because you just know like, wow, it really is the most important thing to you. Yeah. Mm. Whereas like I cheating at the Tour de France, the hundred meters. Of, makes perfect sense to me yeah. because of the level of prestige associated with the sport. Whereas with bomb, bomb sled, you go, really, you, you bothered cheating? Was it, I, I feel mm, okay. about like uh, I feel a heist should be legal. Like, because I'm like, if you've yeah. gone to the effort, if like the Hatton Garden thing, you go, well done. Well, you go, if well, you they, didn't get mm. caught on the day, yeah, well done. Because they earned it. Yeah, mm. they yeah, did yeah, earn yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a uh, it, it, number one. Yes, number two. How would you cheat though at something like skeleton? There's no room to cheat. Because it's just you. Well, I guess you hold, put a lead weight in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. You just or eat. something really yeah. heavy. <laughs> post match interview, put, you're like, <laughs> you put a really big magnet on the finish line and a really big magnet on your head. <laughs> what does that uh, uh, do it in 10 uh, seconds? And like, uh, you just, you hit the magnet so hard, you vanish, you just clap yeah, into it. Like, like an accordion. Medal. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 for now, it's because of, of systematic cheating in Skeleton, p- medals are only awarded posthumously. Yeah. No one yeah. lives. You go so quickly, you're not even on the track. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just from the start, just <laughs> don't. Like you yeah, don't even perfect. go around. Uh, just but hold on, if you're gonna turn down. on that strong of an electromagnet at the bottom of a skeleton track that is presumably festooned with cameras and stuff, wouldn't all of them also fly to the bottom of the track? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you're basically putting it inside a gigantic MRI. <laughs> We've be, ended the Winter Olympics. And so with very, the medals. Oh yeah, and everyone's <laughs> coins, every, the pockets of everyone with coins and just mm. torn with like shrapnel and. Mm. That's why you got one go guy with like a metal plate in his shoulder is just like dragged down the bobsled track get, with you inexorably. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even in the running. I do want to. This might be really offensive to anyone watching or listening who is who Great does start. skeleton. I'm with you. Yeah, but you didn't give a shit about offending the ancient Greeks when you were doing that. <laughs> yeah, accent. With, yeah. I didn't oh. do the accent. My idea. We're not all the same. <laughs> <laughs> the Here come the skeleton people. <laughs> the skeleton. I oh, feel boy. like because there's not much of an opportunity to practice the skeleton. Are the people who are like gold medal winners at the skeleton as good at the skeleton as like Lionel Messi is as good at football? Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah. well, it's some. How much better are they at skeleton than we would be if we tried it once? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because how often can you get on the track? Well, and yeah. certainly once I've got this huge lead weight in my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah, a fantastic. Yeah. The fastest anyone's ever done the skeleton. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's like Mr. Bean wins the skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Can you call Elmer oh, Fudd oh, oh, oh. for yeah. a big magnet? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just trying to leave. And they go, sorry, are you waving goodbye? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Mr. Blobby. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> you sure don't want to talk? Your lips are stuck to our microphone right now. <laughs> Guy's head is visibly like keeling over. Yeah. <laughs> There's like neck veins as he's trying to rip. The magnet hasn't turned off yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like swallowing it to get yeah. out of the... <laughs> Mm. Yeah, the guy's left the venue and you just see him like lying head first, just slamming into his own car. That's <laughs> <laughs> him getting up. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's, yeah, he's driving and he's a foot off his own driver's seat because he's on the roof of his own car. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, screams from the men's toilet at the skeleton today. <laughs> screams of joy. We can only assume. <laughs> a man yelling, I should never have swallowed that. <laughs> and then an animal like cry. <laughs> a haunting bestial note. Can I tell you about Magic Matt, magician in pickpocket? Oh, yeah. The only entertainment on the Isle of Man. Isle of Man entertainment for private parties, corporate events, and weddings. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Your guests will talk about both the magic and the pickpocketing. <laughs> I might know. I might know. Magic Matt is the thing about the island. You think so? Is it? Is Maybe. he like is a there a picture? Fr- is he stole like a- your handkerchiefs. <laughs> Why, that's the urchin who had my purse. <laughs> <laughs> is he is he like a free magician and how he makes the money is by pickpocketing your guests. Yes. So they're all like, they're distracted by the illusions. They're like, yeah. why, what devilry this is. And then they turn yeah. around and they're like, my doubloons. But that could be a good deal. Like, you don't yeah. have to pay me. You don't have to hire me. Yeah, but yeah. I, if, what, if I get to keep whatever I get. Mm. Mm. That sounds like a town so archaic that they had like a name for each of the each of the jobs in the town, but also each of the criminals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, yeah. Go, there goes Mick the pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> so, He's free for children's job. parties, but he does come at a cost. It has to be crime. This is a, <laughs> this is a picture of, of Matt taking a selfie of himself and a bunch of wedding guests standing in front of a man facing away from him, saying, I popped over to Kirk Michael recently to entertain during the evening party at a wedding. Great fun mm. it was, too, performing magic at the tables. Here are some of the guests that had gathered outside the marquee. The photo is of me wearing a tie that belongs to my helper with his back to the camera. He doesn't know that I've taken it from him yet, and it's a lovely moment no. when he realizes. That's like The Simpsons. Yeah. He's also I'm a magician. Not wearing a tie. <laughs> mm, yeah. He's actually done it. Magician, pickpocket, and after dinner comedy. Ah, uh, you're, you're, there's some Okay, we need to get this guy on the pod. We need to fly him over. Well, I mean, it's not that expensive to get someone a flight from the Isle of Man to oh. here. And he can keep whatever he takes. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of audio. He's just leaving, just jangling with audio equipment. Yeah, we just He's, suddenly we all look up and all the microphones are gone. <laughs> like, if, it's what, I guess if you like promise not to report him to the police, like in the same way that like uh, Crime Watch would do this, is if there was someone who'd like been committing crimes like in front of or or with sex workers, it'd be like sex workers come forward. We're not gonna do it like legally. We do not care. It's all fine. We just want your sort of evidence. Maybe you could sort of be like, look, we're not gonna go to the police about your pickpocketing. Just come on the pod. Yeah, 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 no, no. We're not going to chat about the shit you've been. And pulling. he just spits your phone back. <laughs> <in> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think the level of temptation is if you are a pickpocket where you go like, "I'm so good at pickpocketing, I can literally make it a big part of my whole well, it's, act it's, to use your powers for evil." It's a bit like the skeleton, right? How do you get good enough at pickpocketing to do it as a party trick? Well, there was, there was, I remember there being a documentary in like the early 2000s, but it was people who were so good at pickpocketing they were like, "Yeah, I can take someone's tie off on the street." Like, and, but also you go, well, how are you then selling off the tie? That's not an iPhone. Yeah, yeah, Go yeah. in their pocket and take the iPhone. That's better than the intricate... If iPhones were intricately wrapped around <laughs> well, our necks, that yeah. would make sense. You go into the Groucho Club with a tie rack inside your coat and go, yeah. pretty good stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if... He, so he's... Imagine if you're a pickpocket and you know you're an amazing pickpocket and one day you just think, God, I'm really... I'm short of... I need some money. Mm. You just go, hmm... Should I just go to Covent Garden, maybe just harvest a few wallets? Well, I was thinking, I've always found it weird when Darren do Brown it. would do that. I'd be like, so when he practiced doing that, did he just do it on unsuspecting members of the public and just made some money? You know when yeah. you talk, go up to someone and say, hey man, I just need you to drain your bank account and send it all over to me and the person would be like, yeah, yeah sure. Because if you said it in a certain way, people would just do it. Yeah. I think he must try that. The, the, the person who, who gives that to him, like, they must like fall for every multi-level marketing scheme that hoves into view, right? Like, yeah. I have a fun fact related to that. It's not funny, but it is fun. Is it all your bank account details? I'm interested in that. (laughs) No, my mother's made a name. So basically, you know when you get a spam email and it's like really bad, it's like Comic Sans, clearly crazy and really, really bad quality. You're just like, who would possibly fall for this? But they make them look like that on purpose. So if you do fall for it, you know you'll fall for everything else. Oh, it's to weed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like a filter. Basically, Ah. it's not like it's bad on purpose. 
Is it like crazy? if you pick up the phone and it's a spam call and it just hang up immediately? It's yeah, because yeah, you yeah, haven't yeah. gone, hello? <laughs> <laughs> I is you know champagne in the club? I, get, <laughs> I was doing, uh, this was in Edinburgh in 2017, and I got a call from uh, the people who were sort of doing my sort of the PR side of things at the time. And they were like, hey, are there any spare tickets to your show tonight? And I was like, I think, I was like, yes. Um, and they were like, okay, so Darren Brown wants to see your show. And I was like, what? And they were like, so, it, it, as in basically, he didn't want to see my show. He just got in touch with him and was like, hey, I'm in Edinburgh, have you got any of your shows that we should see? And they were sort of like, well, Glenn hasn't sold out. So I think that's what that's how the conversation <laughs> the liar, got. Darren Brown, yeah. Yeah. whose name is actually Darren. Yeah. I looked this up. There's this, yeah. what? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because I was always yeah, like, yeah. What's, we were talking about it on another podcast ages ago. And I was like, what sort of fucking name is Darren? So we looked it up and his name is just Darren. And this is this is testament to his trickery. That was his first ah, trick. No, yeah, I, I walked down on stage. I, I used to at this at this show. I'd stand on stage and I'd watch the audience as they came in. And it became apparent that after the last audience member coming in, I was like, "He's not here." And I was like, "I put aside like five tickets," and I was really gutted. And then about halfway through the show, in this really dark room, and then there was uh, there was there was always like this one person who was always lit up by like the emergency exit sign. And there was a guy sat there with like you know in Forrest Gump when he just starts running for ages, he has this huge beard. Someone wearing like this enormous beard, oh, and, like, you a baseball fake beard on? and I was like, are you joking me? And it was like, I think I think that's him. And, I, and, and it just filled my heart with joy that I was like, Darren Brown has come to my show in disguise. And I then just like, it was the best I'd ever performed. I felt so good that he was in the audience. And it was like a pay what you want show. So you have to stand up the back at the end of a bucket and stuff. And he was like the last person to sort of leave. And he sort of shambled over and he fucking stank and was like, thanks for the show, man. And it was like, it's not him. It's <laughs> not him. <laughs> So, so gutted. I then got, I, I, I mean, there was a text I'd received about a minute before the show started. Could have been like eight. Uh-huh. <laughs> but a man called Champagne the Clown <laughs> has taken up the do, ticket. Glad think, I am coming to your show in a beard. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do, you, do you think Darren Brown looked at the picture of you on the poster and he was like, nah, he's so like, that's, there's no room in those pockets. I can't. Yeah, I, I can't. can't. He's wearing a tie and it's uh, too tightly wound. Too tightly wound. wound. Yeah, I yeah. Can't. This guy's not that a good looks, target. That looks like a full Windsor. I couldn't get that <laughs> done quick enough. I mean, when Darren Brown meets an estate agent, he must be like, I can't. I, there's, I couldn't even get my fist around this thing. The thing is, this tie is so heavy that the change in weight would be immediately noticeable when I remove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like he, need, he needs to find someone who's uh, sort of going to a formal event, maybe, wearing a bow tie. That's easy. One little tug, falls apart. The most impressive thing to pickpocket would probably be like a sort of an in-use butt plug. Oh. Like just, someone just, yeah. just produces a butt yeah. plug and a guy goes, Wait, do, what? And he starts patting his ass. That's fine! Whoa! Yeah! <laughs> a, like a really Victorian corset, yeah. one that your mother's yeah. done in the mirror. She tells you, sort of like, you know, you will marry, must. Yes, mother, I shout like one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're, you're still holding it in like hours yeah, after yeah, it's yeah. gone. It's like, was this your corset? <laughs> you reveal that you've taken this man's butt plug, and then suddenly confetti starts spewing out of his ass, and he runs out <laughs> of the room, clutching his butt cheeks. <laughs> like, oh, how embarrassing. Just screaming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it, like he's one of those. The idea you... that a butt plug is used as a preventative measure <laughs> is like the <laughs> only thing to my mind. Incontinence. Yeah. Like a champagne stopper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A is... champagne stopper. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, that's oh right. God. Is this your plug? <gasps> it that's, is. Uh, that's what the Isle of Man police are called. <laughs> champagne. <laughs> I've been call unable. Cham- call champagne stoppers anonymously. I have been unable to find any evidence of Champagne the Clown. Okay. I don't, I've been looking. For this whole time, I find nothing. This is like something that, like when the you, the scenes are lit entirely in blue and Jason Bourne. This guy's a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my found. god! It's Champagne the Clown. <laughs> yeah. Get some sleep, Pam. You look tired. Yeah. <laughs> oh, where is he? Where is the clown? <laughs> it's it's, it's testament playing. to the stand-up comedy <laughs> mindset that I was about to say exactly that. But you just got there yeah, first. But that's same. actually, it's better to know that we were all so tightly yeah, on yeah. that wavelength. Yeah. <laughs> Including the sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I, yeah. I have found one website that appears to have clowns in the Isle of Man. Oh, yeah. Partytime.im slash party.html. You're using the Tor browser. Mm. For this, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. We're on the dark web. So who are the clowns? So Carl and Kyle and their disclosure checked. Uh, yeah, but Carl and Kyle can both hypothetically be Champagne. I mm. guess, but th- none of them are called Champagne the Clown. No, I think this, this, this story about Champagne the Clown dates from maybe 
1999. Oh, so he's dead. Could be pre incident. What well, you think could clowns be... lead tragically short lives? Like it's a high <laughs> intensity. You know what? I hadn't examined my own um, prejudices here, but yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like being like a skag head or something. Like yeah. it just it has really a, low know, immune system. Yeah. Like I actually do think that. That clowns <laughs> live sort of short. Well, you already have lives. to be quite bald to become a clown in the first place. So maybe yeah. it starts quite late in yeah. the game, right? Mm. But also they have very pallid white faces. Yeah, and it's they? not makeup. Yeah. Bulbous Al red noses. Alcoholism, like a really. The very long feet is a sign of a pituitary gland defect. Yeah. Which <laughs> does yeah. typically kill most but people like, by like, 40 like the, the guy with the, the yeah. smallest yeah. dick in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as the feet grow, would the you, dick shrinks would you in prefer inverse proportion. Would you prefer clowns had tiny dicks or enormous dicks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which no, but I agree. It's a good <laughs> question. Both small. Yeah. Both small. Yeah. Both yeah. of them. Which uh, would you? Which would you prefer, Milo? But for, answer for, the question. But for, like in general, senator. <laughs> it feels. I may I remind you, you are under oath. It feels like a kind of Schrodinger's cock situation. Sort of in what in what scenario are you going to be aware of the clown's penis? That's what I'm most worried about. To be please, honest. Please do not respond to the question with a question. Just answer it as asked. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I would have preferred the small. <laughs> I'm tugging your collar. Um, well. Uh, I plead the fifth. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you're on record saying you'd prefer the small clown penis, yes? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> May I read this email from Milo Edwards, dated May 14th. 2022. They both be f they're both funny and, and horrifying. Yeah. Kidding? I think I would prefer tiny penis only because, only because I was confronted with a situation at the weekend, where did you did you, you stand down on Saturday? Yeah, I I must I, I so I had to leave really really early, and they were like, okay, so you'll probably be on like first or second. There's someone who needs to go on first before you. Oh, I know the guy. So it was a guy. It was a guy I didn't know, and I was like, oh, I don't know what he does. Uh, and so we're just chatting in the wings, waiting to go on. Stamp Town's like this amazing, really really funny like variety show where there's sort of like clowning, there's comedians, there's performers, all all, all sort of varieties. And I'm chatting to him, and he he goes out on stage. And I can't really see through the wings. I'm just sort of hearing. And we're in a space where once we're backstage, we're as close as you and I now. And the audience are going absolutely wild, but he's not saying anything, which means, well, he, you know, he's, he's stripping off. And right, so the crowd yeah. are going absolutely wild. And all the while I'm panicking, sort of thinking, how am I going to? I don't, I don't think, I don't think following this with whimsy is going to cut it. I'm really panicking about my set. And then uh, I, I'd sort of forgotten that obviously this guy's stripping and he'd sort of done this big finale. And then he came back into the wings, obviously fully naked. And. He had his boxers around his ankles, which was so much more unintentionally sexually threatening than if he'd just been fully naked. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> but then, separate to that, I then saw his his dick, and it was just a different species. To yeah, it's a giant, giant it, cock. It's unbelievable, and I think for that reason, like because of the surprise of oh, I'm in close quarters with his enormous penis, I think I'd prefer a clowns. Did it microscopic? Like, did it knock you off balance? This guy shuffling it past. Was just a like a butcher's sausage. It was just, it was unbelievably impressive. It was like <laughs> this is just but, a different leak to what I've ever like encountered. Hang, on. Yeah. hang was... on, don't you feel as though if you have a giant penis, you sh it's if your main act is stripping, but for comedy, yeah. then you shouldn't. But it wasn't for comedy, it was a variety show. Oh, okay. yeah. It's more so like the, a burlesque thing. Exactly. Right, so the okay. crowd are going wild. Because if you're a comedian who's like, oh, I'm the comedian who strips, and you're like, mm. big dick comedian, then. The, yeah, yeah, that's like, it, yeah, yeah that's you true. People don't want, want a big deprecating. dick comedian. You don't want a big think. dick comedian. No, they don't, they don't want to be confronted with, if you're okay, a comedian. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. No, but I will say, I think if the clown has a tiny penis, then I feel bad for him. Whereas if he has a big penis, I'm like, oh, you're going to be okay. You're doing this by choice. Oh, so you kind of want that you, you you want the clown to kind of be okay emotionally. Yeah. So the clown is sad, but you sort of go, but it's okay because he's gonna. That clown's gonna fuck. Exactly. I, I think exactly. it depends what kind of clown. Oh yeah. Like elaborate. It, it's more frightening and and horrifying in a way for it to be like a proper like you know Pennywise like. There's not Dick much. Comes yeah, out yeah. the drain and drags Georgie. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's that's what the balloon is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wait, do you want big dick Pennywise? Do you want small dick Pennywise? Well, I mean, it's a different equation. Whereas if it's like a kind of cool modern clown who's been to like France and it doesn't have white face paint and silly bright colored clothes on. Zach Zucker. Yeah, but even more like I traditional clown. Yeah, not a traditional, traditional clown. clown. If it's not a traditional yeah. clown, I think it's funnier. For them to have a smaller penis because then it's undercutting the fact that, that what they're doing is actually quite cool and fashionable now. Yes. Whereas yeah. if it's like a white face clown, you go, you're 
is so humiliating to look like that and to literally be like, no, my job is literally not like cool French clown. I mean, literally, <laughs> like silly. Uh-huh. For them you to gotta have like be a, winning on some one of the yeah, categories. Yeah, humiliatingly yeah. cramped yeah. drive home so from tini- the gig. A yeah. tiny dick in the custard pie to the face uh-huh. is the worst combination. Can I tell you? Know? I, think, I, think, I think you know what it is. The sadder the clown, the bigger the dick, the better. Like a sad clown with, this just is like the equation. A, with yeah. a nine inch penis. That's Dabbing really funny. Dabbing his tears with a giant. Yeah, yeah just yeah. <laughs> like, a, like a, a sad clown whose pants fell down and he's packing. Yeah. That's really yeah. funny. That's pretty funny. Wait, can That's I tell funny. you a funny big dick story? Mm-hmm. So I have sex with uh, people with ver- varying sizes, right? And that's and I respect them all. And so I provide <laughs> clowns con- and non. I provide condoms of various sizes, and I found myself in a situation. You provide, hang on a sec. I feel you, like the normal condoms <laughs> cater to already a very no, wide range. I don't think range. you understand the range no, that I'm working what? with. Do you know I I was in 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 America Uh-oh. a few years ago. I, no, no, I said we had who <laughs> who provided me. With she was just like uh, I think I've got a condom around here somewhere and it was of a larger size and it was just so degrading. Just yeah, like that's condom. literally what happened to me. It was just the, it was, it was um, so degrading. Just like a bin bag. Mm. It was absurd. It was like a fucking wind to go down a hell to skelter. It looked yeah. like the end of when someone blows enormous bubbles. Do you know like that? <laughs> <laughs> you got the West Ham condom. Yeah. It's like it's it's like a hula hoop with some latex in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're all snitching on yourself so hard right now. But wait, Olga, do you just have yeah. like? Okay. Are you like Peter Serafinovich in John Wick? You've just got this like tray. Of- yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. It's it's just this thing's all- like a sleeping bag. <laughs> Who could yeah. this possibly be for? They're all mixed up in this one bag, so I pulled it out, and midway through him putting it on, I real I looked at the at the the brand the brand, and I was like. How do I break it to this person that his dick isn't big enough for this god? How do you? I just had to say it, and then he maintained his erection. But it was it was one of the dipl- diplomacy speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is was one of the toughest Are conversations. You kind of like to have. like you know like the women at Rigby and Pella can just like look at a woman's tits and immediately know exactly what bra says they are. You're like that, <laughs> but for dicks, you've got you've got like ten different sizes of condom, <laughs> uh-huh. and you're like. Ah, yes, a 42B. It's like like the poster racket HMV that you can sort of flick through. (laughs) This is clearly a sad white face clown. I suppose I'll be getting out the magnum. (laughs) It's yeah. like Condom chooses the wizard. The yeah, I was going to say, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's completely yeah. emotionless, like that like that old guy from Harry Potter. Yes, I think I've got something here for you. <laughs> <laughs> or like, like an optometrist, like getting inside on a bit tighter, looser, <laughs> longer, shorter. <laughs> number is one that, is or number that, two? Yeah. Is that better or worse? Uh, better uh, or worse? Yeah. <laughs> Harder or softer? Uh-huh. Put on this condom and read the letters on the other side. Of the <laughs> 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 oh, it just says uh, C U M M M M M M. The condom's so tight you can't read. This guy has a really big dick. It's too tight. His eyes are affected. It's got like a series of like you know those things you used to measure spaghetti, like a bunch of glory. Holes in the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just like to, just to give me a rough idea, and then this, we'll do a more precise sizing in a moment. There's one that's just like family of four. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> my dick could feed a family of four. <laughs> and then, and then on the other side of the glory hole, you can get those like little posing, uh, posing like, cutouts of the beach. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> 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 like a police like, <laughs> 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 